before jumping into the result of uh, finding the optimal mechanism for any number of agents we will first focus on the optimal mechanism design for a single agent so let us assume that there is only one agent how can you design the uh, the auction such that you get the maximum revenue out of it so uh, the motivation is very simple we first want to uh, uh, find a solution of a simpler pro problem and then we will generalize so the setup here is that there is only one agent so therefore type set is just given by an interval 0 to beta and the mechanism f comma p is just mapping uh, that 0 to beta to 0 uh, to this interval 0 comma 1 which is the probability of that agent getting allocated so there is still a chance that the object will not be sold at all and the, uh, and the payment is again taking this uh, values between 0 and beta which is the type and uh, mapping it to the set of real numbers now in this setup because there is exactly one agent so there is no belief system for the other agents the bic and dsic definitions become this uh, become same and therefore we can uh, write the dsic condition as uh, as we know it so the player is getting better payoff at least weekly better payoff uh, when it is uh, reporting it truthfully versus when it is reporting uh, misreporting to s let's say Similarly, individual rationality is just the expected utility of this agent, uh, which is non-negative. Now, the expected revenue earned by a mechanism is given by the payment that it makes and the probability of, uh, uh, so the, uh, the, the, the prior probability of this uh, specific uh, uh, type of that individual. So, because the uh, expected revenue is calculated from the point of view of the mechanism designer, even though the type is deterministically known by the player, it is not known to the mechanism designer and that is the reason it is taking the expectation. So the problem of uh, opti optimal uh, mechanism is to find uh, a mechanism M star in this class of IC and IR mechanism such that the, uh, the revenue earned, so this is the expected revenue, that revenue earned by that mechanism M star is going to outperform all the other mechanisms and we'll call this M star to be the optimal mechanism. Now what is the structure of the optimal mechanism? Uh, that is the question that we are interested in. So if we are considering only IC and IR mechanisms which are the, uh, the kind of the, the basic requirements of a mechanism, uh, we use the characterization theorems and lemmas as we have seen before. So we know that uh, this uh, payment formula has to follow this uh, integral, uh, uh, integral form for, uh, in, uh, for uh, incentive compatibility. And for individual rationality, this, uh, this constant of this uh, payment should be non-positive. And because we are trying to maximize the revenue, so there is no reason why we should choose anything smaller than zero. Uh, we should be exactly matching it to zero. So P zero will be exactly equal to zero. So this is the uh, condition. So it makes our uh, expression of finding the, uh, 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 the optimal mechanism a little easier because now we have the payment which reduces to this form, only the, uh, the remaining part of the, uh, the payment formula. So therefore, the expected revenue is given by this uh, this term, which we have already defined. And notice that this is only given by the uh, the allocation rule. The moment you fix the allocation rule uh, in this optimal mechanism, you exactly know what is the payment formula. And therefore, this is only a function of uh, this uh, f, which is the allocation rule. And we can expand this out by replacing this pt appropriately. Uh, to find out what is the expected revenue. This is what we have to maximize with respect to f with the condition that f is non-decreasing because that is the requirement for uh, incentive compatibility uh, on, on this uh, allocation rule and as long as that is satisfied we have a uh, DSIC uh, or IC in this case because they are equivalent we have this IC mechanism and we are trying to maximize the revenue. So let us uh, uh, look at how we can do that. So the first thing we are going to do is we, we are going to kind of get a um, uh, little simpler expression. We will uh, do this uh, integral uh, uh, in, in steps so that we can reduce this expression to a smaller form. And uh, the, this lemma is telling you how you can uh, reduce it. So the expected revenue 
um, for any implementable allocation rule f is given by this formula where you have t minus this uh, uh, strange looking uh, expression which is a function of uh, of that prior distribution the the distribution here and the density here and then you are taking the expectation with respect to gt so how can we find this we can just start from the very uh, the first principle so uh, we had this uh, expected revenue of uh, uh, this player expected revenue from this mechanism for the uh, auction year uh, in in this original form that is what we have started with now if we just expand this out it is uh, uh, it is doing this the so this term is getting multiplied here we are just uh, um, using the distributive uh, uh, form and it, the second part has this component now we are going to uh, use a kind of a, a transformation of these limits so we are doing the uh, change of limits and here is how we are doing it so what we have here is a we are first integrating with respect to x and then uh, uh, integrating with respect to t and uh, the x is running from 0 to t and t is running from 0 to beta so what we are going to do in next is actually changing the order of integration and that will help us in uh, understanding this integral better so in this uh, so how do we do this uh, change of uh, 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 change of order in the integration so this is standard limit switching so uh, we have x on on this x axis and t on the other axis uh, in the original form uh, x was running from 0 to t and t was running from uh, 0 to beta uh, so we'll have to uh, look at which space does this uh, uh, does this uh, double integral uh, satisfy so the first part is uh, when x is uh, moving from 0 to t so if you look at uh, this part here uh, this is essentially uh, where t uh, the x is uh, starting from 0 and going to the value of t so this is the first first part 0 to t and then uh, the, the second component that is t is getting uh, swept over from uh, 0 uh, to beta so therefore this uh, this strip this yellow strip is getting uh, up and down the, the uh, spanning the whole space here so that is the space on which this integration is happening now we can sw uh, switch the sides so instead of going from uh, from 0 to t first and then sweeping it over between 0 to beta we are first looking at t which is going from x so this is x to beta and that is the uh, the order in which t is going and then sweeping this green part from from left to right which is from 0 to uh, to this maximum value which is also beta so that uh, sweeping uh, changes this order of integration the integrand that is gt times fx remains the same so what advantage does it give us so we can write write this uh, explicitly in this form so this is giving us the uh, integral with respect to this uh, density and we know that this density is nothing but g of t and if you if you look at that so it will be at beta it is going to be 1 so 1 minus gt is going to be the uh, the inner integral and the other part we have ft now this ft uh, integral over 0 to beta is the same integral which is also happening here so therefore we can actually take this ft and uh, uh, dt outside and we can uh, look at the the rest of the integral together so this is going to be uh, so you just do some amount of rearrangement to find out that this is going to be t minus uh, 1 minus gt divided by gt multiplied by this gt and ft and that is exactly what we wanted to uh, uh, wanted to satisfy so this uh, uh, this integral formula will have this expression here um, and that is uh, that is the uh, expected revenue so essentially here this ft was missing so that that should be here so the expected revenue uh, uh, is uh, given by this sim rather simpler formula and now the uh, mechanism the optimal mechanism that we are trying to find uh, solves this problem of maximizing this quantity uh, subject to the condition that f is non decreasing now in order to do that we are going to assume some regularity conditions on this uh, distribution g 
and that uh, regularity condition is known as the monotone hazard rate condition. So what does it, it say? It is saying that this uh, ratio of gx by 1 minus gx that is just the, uh, the inverse of this expression here is mo um, monotone non-decreasing in x. Right? So that is the monotone hazard rate condition and this is not an arbitrary condition that we are imposing. Uh, various standard distributions like uniform distribution and exponential uh, distribution they satisfy this monotone hazard rate condition and for those kind of conditions in those kind of uh, distributions or priors we can uh, use this fact that this uh, quantity is non-decreasing so how can we make use of this fact so what what uh, advantage does it give so if we look at this expression that x uh, is equal to 1 minus gx uh, capital gx by is lowercase gx if g satisfies monotone hazard rate condition then we know that gx by 1 minus gx is uh, non decreasing in x so the inverse of that is non increasing in x so you can sort of get a pictorial idea so this is 1 by gx by gx that is monotone non uh, non increasing and x is exactly a, a monotone increasing function so this uh, function will have a unique solution and that is the fact that we are going to state here. So uh, there exists a unique solution to this expression. We will make use of this. So if we will now uh, define a term called wx and this wx is nothing but this x minus uh, 1 minus gx by uh, gx. So essentially in this, uh, in this term we are just replacing this part with w of t. And looking at under monotone hazard rate condition what happens to this w of t so we observe that uh, this expression so let us assume that this x star is the unique value at which this uh, uh, wx becomes equal to 0 so we already know that this is going to be 0 the uniquely 0 and we know that wx is going to be uh, positive because this uh, this term together so uh, we know that this term is monotone non uh, increasing so minus of that is monotone non decreasing and x is increasing so therefore wx is something uh, a function which is uh, in increasing function so this is w of x uh, with respect to x and we know that it uh, hits this uh, zero point so assuming that this is the uh, uh, the, uh, the y axis is zero here then it hits this at the point x star and anything beyond that, any x which is above x star, this is going to be positive, uh, wx is positive and anything below that it is going to be negative. And that, that gives us a very clear idea of, of how uh, optimization uh, 1, so because our objective is to maximize uh, this quantity wt, gt, ft, uh, it's integral between 0 to beta. We should not be picking when, uh, uh, we should not be allocating the object when this wt is negative because that is going to give us something something negative some uh, negative integral so for a while if we just uh, uh, keep this uh, condition of f being non decreasing aside we can see that whenever t is less than x star there is no reason to uh, allocate that object so it, uh, the ft should be equal to 0 if it is more than x star then we know this is positive we should uh, completely allocate this object and at the point where it is exactly equal to x star, we can allocate it in whatever proportion, it does not really matter. But what we observe interestingly is that this f is non-decreasing. So we have a, have a threshold point, this is very similar to that second price option that we have uh, discussed earlier. So uh, if we plot f of x in this case, uh, then we know that up to x star, uh, this is uh, um, exactly equal to 0. And then from uh, from x star onwards, it is getting uh, fully allocated, and uh, at the x star point, it can have any value in between. But this is certainly a non-decreasing f, and that satisfies the uh, the condition for the optimal one. So uh, um, even though we did not uh, care about the non-decreasingness, the result that we got is actually non-decreasing. So therefore, it is an optimal solution to opt one. So we can state all these uh, sub-results in the form of a theorem. A mechanism under the uh, monotone hazard rate condition is optimal if and only if uh, f is given by this equation 1, the equation that we have just uh, mentioned. 
where x star is the unique solution of this expression uh, x equal to 1 minus gx by uh, lowercase gx and then we can do uh, calculate the, the payment formula uh, for from the from the standard uh, integral formula and uh, that will you will find that this is going to be x star if t is uh, actually it should be t is strictly greater than uh, x, x star for uh, for all the other cases that is t is less than or equal to uh, x star this is going to be exactly equal to zero so that's very very nice so whenever we find some t which is uh, uh, strictly greater than x star we know how much payment to charge and how to allocate so we have to allocate it fully and uh, anything below that we are not going to charge anything and we are not selling that object so this is this is uh, a very interesting result and this is the optimal mechanism which maximizes the revenue for the seller for uh, one player now we are going to generalize it for multiple players.